In the previous lecture, we discussed the concept known as the stopping voltage, which is basically the voltage that is required to stop electrons from moving across the two plates in a photocell. So now let's actually look at the following example that deals with the stopping voltage. So in a certain photoelectric experiment, ultraviolet light with a wavelength of 350 nanometers is directed at a metal plate as shown in this diagram. Now as the voltage is increased, these electrons moving across will slow down and eventually when the voltage is 3 volts, these electrons will stop moving across. So basically what happens is this voltage source creates a negative charge on plate C and a positive charge on plate P. And as the electron moves across, it is repelled by the negative charge on this plate and that stops the electron. Now the electron will only stop if the voltage is 3 volts. So that means the stopping voltage for ultraviolet light is 3 volts. Now, if instead we use red light with a wavelength of 650 nanometers instead of UV light, let's calculate the new voltage, the new stopping voltage. So, let's begin with step one. In step one, we basically want to use the information we're given to calculate what the work function of our electron is. The work function is basically the amount of energy the electron that is found on plate P must gain to be ejected from plate P. Now, it doesn't matter what type of light we use, the work function of the electron does not change as long as we don't change this plate P. So, we can use the work function in step 2 to calculate what the new stopping potential is, the stopping voltage for red light. So, to calculate what the work function is, we have to use this equation that we spoke about in the previous lecture. So basically, the maximum kinetic energy that our electron has as it travels across from plate P to plate C is equal to the energy found on a single photon, so H times F where f is the frequency of light minus phi, which is our work function. So we rearrange and solve for phi. So the work function is equal to hf minus the maximum kinetic energy. So basically to calculate what phi is, we have to know what the maximum kinetic energy is. So we know what h is, it's Planck's constant. We know what f is, that's the frequency of light and we can calculate that by using the wavelength. So, to calculate phi, we have to calculate what the maximum kinetic energy is. Now, because the maximum kinetic energy is equal to Q multiplied by V naught, which is simply the quantity of electric potential energy that the electron gains as it travels across, since these two quantities are equal, we can substitute this into the above equation and solve for phi. So basically, we take this equation and we replace K max with Q multiplied by V naught, where Q is the charge on the electron and V naught is the voltage difference that exists across plate P and plate C. So once again, where exactly does this equation come from? So initially, when the electron is found at this position, it has a maximum kinetic energy. But as the electron travels across and eventually ends up at point C, all that kinetic energy is transformed into electric potential energy that is stored within this electric field. And that's where this quantity comes from. So, we know what Q is, we know what V naught is, we know what H is, but what is the frequency of our UV light? 
So the frequency of UV light is equal to C divided by lambda, the wavelength of UV light, where C is the speed of the light in a vacuum. So now we are ready to solve for the work function. The work function is equal to Planck's constant multiplied by the speed of light divided by the wavelength of UV light minus we have the charge on the electron multiplied by the stopping voltage when using UV light. And we see that the work function is equal to about 8.83 times 10 to the negative 20 joules. So this is the quantity of energy that the electron must gain to be ejected from plate P. So. Now we can take this same equation and basically replace F UV with F red light. So if we take this equation, replace F UV with F red light and solve for V naught, that will give us the voltage, the stopping voltage that is required when using red light. And that's exactly what we do in step two. So QV naught is equal to HC divided by lambda red minus five. So if we take this equation and solve for V naught, we see that V naught, which is not the same V naught as in this case, this V naught represents the stopping voltage when using red light. So V naught is equal to HC divided by the wavelength of red light minus phi, what we calculated in part one divided by Q. So we plug in our values and we see that the stopping voltage, the stopping potential when using red light is equal to about 1.36 volts.